But since that time, the evidence has become strong. First, we saw the fossil record appear. Evidence of human ancestors that had ape-like features established the plausibility of the idea that humans and chimps had common ancestors. And then in the last 20 years, we've seen the emergence of a whole new type of data that's established the close relationship between chimps and humans. And that comes from the analysis of DNA. This is DNA. We've got DNA, chimps have got DNA, bacteria have got DNA, petunias have got DNA, crabs have got DNA. Every living animal, plant, fish, frog has got DNA. And if we compare the DNAs of any two species, we can establish how closely related they are one to another. In the early days of DNA research, a double strand of DNA was extracted from each species to be compared. When heated, the strands split apart. When the single strands from each creature were put together and allowed to cool, the two always combined to form the familiar double helix. The degree to which the strands mated successfully was a measure of their similarity. It turned out that human DNA and chimp DNA combined almost perfectly. Today, this similarity can be seen even more precisely. DNA sequences can now be read letter by letter. Here we're looking at the DNA sequences of one particular gene as found in human and chimp. And what's immediately evident is that humans and chimps have DNAs that are 98% identical. They're basically the same. They're just a couple of spelling changes. Why are there only a couple of spelling changes? Because we and chimps had a common ancestor only a few million years ago. And these few spelling differences have accumulated during the propagation of this DNA during those few million years. If more time had passed since we had our last common ancestor, more spelling changes would have accumulated. If the same gene from a rat is compared, many more spelling differences are seen. That's because our common ancestor with the rat lived about 80 or 100 million years ago, and there's been much more time for spelling differences to accumulate. Chimpanzees and humans are made from blueprints that are 98% the same. But what about the ways humans and chimps think and act in the world? Are there similarities there as well? Why? Doing some pull-ups. Oh, be careful. Psychologist Sally Boysen explores the commonalities between the minds of chimps and humans. A quest that may help explain how the human mind evolved. The developmental milestones really throughout the life of a chimp are almost exactly the same as humans. Everything is so similar. They respond to new things and uh, new toys and they have the same kinds of rough and tumble play. Harper's rough and rowdy and runs all over the place and climbs and Emma really can almost entertain herself. One of the things that our work allows us to see is that chimpanzees can acquire very sophisticated, complex cognitive skills, like learning to count, which they normally wouldn't learn in the wild. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Yet, they have the requisite neural capacity to do that. Where did that come from? Okay, sheep, we're going to do another turn now. Here we go. One of those. Ooh, and a malted milk ball. Can you tell me the answer to this with the blue and the brown? Show me, yeah. Go ahead. Excellent. There's almost nothing that the chimps haven't been able to learn that we've tried to teach them. 
we've seen their ability to grasp extremely complex notions like the concept of zero, for example. Okay, Sheeb, look, what if I didn't put any candy here at all? What would you say? Zero. That's right. There's no candy here. Oh, that's too bad, isn't it? There's no way the chimps would be able to do this if they didn't have a great deal of commonality in literally the neurological structure that supports their ability to learn, just like we do. Those things are absolutely comparable and had to come from a common ancestor. The similarities that we have with our primate relatives are extraordinary. We share so much of our DNA, we share so much of our morphology, we even share our blood types. But for all of those similarities, there are striking differences. I think the reason for this is really very simple. And that is the line of evolution that led to us led for reasons which we're only beginning to understand to an explosive development of mental capacity. And what clearly happened is that natural selection favored the evolution of organisms that could communicate, that could manipulate symbols, and could construct language. Darwin's great idea is a grand and marvelous explanation that shows us that we are united with every other form of life on this planet. And I find that an exciting and maybe even an ennobling way to look at things. Darwin died in April 1882 at the age of 73. The family thought he would be buried in the parish churchyard. Darwin had said months before he died that he would have to look forward to it as the sweetest place on earth. It was not to be. In London, Darwin's friends determined to make his death and burial a state occasion. They went to the Royal Society and they got signatures. They went to the House of Commons and got up a petition. They telegraphed the Dean of Westminster who was abroad and got his approval. A special anthem was even written for the occasion. And on the 26th of April, a week after the death, Darwin's body was borne mightily in procession down the aisle of Westminster Abbey to be interred in the shadow of the grave of Sir Isaac Newton. Darwin's interment celebrated the vast social transformation that England was undergoing. There were new colonies, new industries, and new men to run them. Darwin's body was enshrined to the greater glory of these new professionals, for he had naturalized creation and delivered human nature and human destiny into their hands. Society would never be the same. Darwin's vision of nature was, I believe, fundamentally a religious vision, one with which he ended his most famous work on the origin of species. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one, and that whilst this planet has gone, gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful, have been and are being evolved.